Hey everybody, John with OWL. Today I am going to be putting on some fan compass skid plates. So one on the floor right here is the engine skid. Back in the other room we've got um, transmission skid plate. It's a fairly easy install. We've got the OWL Rebel up on some jack stands and we'll crawl under and show you what we're doing. I got started already a little bit. Um, also, we have the OWL addition uh, hammerhead bumper on here. Nice little worn winch. Um, so it's gonna be slightly different because this bumper extends down. Let me show you if you can see. Oh. All right, sorry, I hit a button. Um, so this bumper extends down here. So it kind of blocks stuff a little bit. But the first thing we're gonna do is remove this piece of sheet metal that I have in my hand. And this, goes right up here. So there's this sheet metal running across the front of the engine and there's just two bolts in the front of it. Maybe I can get my camera in here. Can you see, there we go. Remove those two bolts and the same on the other side and then this piece just lifts right out. So once that's removed, you've got your leaf spring skid plate right here. I've loosened these already, but this is super easy. You just take these four bolts out and you're gonna wanna keep these bolts because these are going to get used again this under leaf spring little factory skid plate is covered in this nice um nice gunk here that is probably some sort of rust proofing the nice thing is when you get it on your fingers you like can't get it off which is super fun okay so we have removed the leaf spring skid plate and then I'm coming in from the front of the vehicle, so this is farthest towards the back. This needs to be cut out along here and here, and the same for the other side, which means we need safety goggles, AKA the Rec Specs, gloves, and a cutoff disc. So I will cut these out and we'll proceed. Oh, there's a hole in the glove. Thanks, glove. Wow. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, I'm fine. It's just hot. Just getting covered in molten lava. So that wasn't so bad. Got a little bit hot on the hand, but other than that, it went uh, pretty smoothly. So those are now cut out. So what I'm gonna do now is just grab a little grinder, clean that up, and then I'm gonna hit that with a little rattle can black. One of the most important tools in the shop is a good can of rattle can, AKA spray paint, and uh, paint that. Also, I nicked back here a little bit with the cutoff disc, so you wanna hit that with some spray paint as well. So this is the main skid plate which we are now ready to mount up under the van. You've got these uh, countersunk bolts. These are gonna go in here and this is gonna actually bolt up. This is the front up here towards the front of the van. So it's gonna kind of rotate like this. And then this is gonna bolt into where you remove that leaf spring skid plate. And that's gonna hold it up while you put in all the other bolts. So for this part, I have a five millimeter Allen, and I also have some blue Loctite. Now, you don't have to put Loctite on there, but because these bolts are facing downhill, and we're actually planning on bringing this vehicle off-road, not just to the local shopping mall, uh, I'm putting on some Loctite. If you hear noise in the background, that's because actual work is still going on. Now, if I was smarter, I would go get my jack, another jack and hold this up. But I figure most of you at home don't have multiple jacks. So we'll try to do it the low budget way. Where are my holes? There they are. 
Marco e And of course, don't tighten any of these until you get them all in because you probably won't be able to get the others in if you tighten the first one way down. All right, so here's what we look like now. We've got those four countersunk bolts in and it's basically in the position that it's going to be. Uh, we just got a little more work in front of us. So we got the four bolts in the uh, leaf spring skid plate we've got those four in you don't necessarily want to crank them all down because you want to have a little bit of adjustability in this plate if need be now what we got to do it's a little bit tricky i've got one already done here i'll show you how to do the other side you see this bolt here and this magnet here and then we have a carriage bolt here so the way this works is this cross member is hollow and you can't tighten a bolt on a hollow tube you'll just crush it and so what you have is you have a spacer that goes in there and to get the spacer over to where it needs to go it's a little bit tricky i gotta be honest um, so this spacer goes in that hole it gets slid over you line it up with the hole underneath and then you slide the carriage bolt up it's it's there's no simple way to do it it's a little bit tricky but having good tools always makes life easier how am i going to connect to here so this is metal and this is uh just a magnet on the end of an extendable or telescoping stick. If you don't have one of these, get one at a hardware store. You will use it a million times while you're working on things. So to install this, you're gonna want the magnet and the short spacer. There's also a long spacer. It's hard to hold one-handed. There's a short and a long. For this, we're using the shorter spacer. spacer. And we're also using the three and a half inch bolt. Uh, which is the shorter of the two. Then on top of that, you're putting a washer and a nut. So let's see if we can uh, watch how I do this. So the hole is right here and getting that slide over is not the easiest thing in the world. And I really don't know how I'm gonna attach this so you guys can watch, but I'll do my best. So an important thing to remember when doing this is that <clears throat> the bottom of this cross member is actually open, right? So to fit the cross member, it helps to be able to pull down on this slightly while you're sliding that in place. Otherwise it's gonna to be too tight. So you gotta pull down on this. There's also super hard to see, but there's like a, um, a structure, a support brace across horizontally. You gotta set it up on the other side of that and then push it in place with a magnet or if you have long fingers uh, and you pull down on the plate, it can really help. So now you can kind of see where, I don't know if you can see up there, Kind of line it up and slide the bolt up. After we've got the carriage bolts in the front, now it is time to either finish that up if you only have the engine skid plate and move on to putting on the front of that, or if you have the transmission and transfer case skid plate like we're gonna be putting on, uh, now is the time to put that on underneath. So you're gonna have to, um, if their instructions are shipped with a kit, you're now gonna move on to the instructions for the transmission transfer case uh, skid plate, which we're now gonna slide in and go from there. So here's a little something different. If you have a standard sprinter, then you should be able to proceed uh, much more easily. If you have a Revel, you've got this and all of these. I think the Revel is a great value. I think that um, a lot of the things you get with the Revel are fantastic. I think that the way the underside is handled with these wires is a hot mess. I mean, <laughs> you've got a structure that's meant to kind of support and protect the underbelly here and you have wires zip tied onto the outside of it but anyway this is not a bitch session we have to take this off we want to put a proper skid plate on so you have these self-tapping screws which i think are like a 10 millimeter ish it'll work uh zip these out take this off and then you're going to be able to put this uh, skid plate up. It actually slides in. See this little gap right here? 
it actually slots in here before you tighten everything up. I pulled the four uh, self-tapping screws or bolts, hex head screws from here. And before I take this off, I want to say make sure you uh, get a hold of those self-tappers because those are a great way to get a flat tire. Make sure you pick those up off your driveway and get rid of them. This, you got to kind of flex this metal up. And then pull it down. Uh, and it comes off. And then you can kind of throw that away. And then you've got these here. You may need to clip this to kind of stuff them more up to get this thing to clear because the way this works, this is going to slot in here. Right like that. And then we're going to lift up. We got to push all those wires up in there. So I'm going to have to clip. Look at that. See how I pulled the wires through that opening now? It's actually gonna protect them much better. And then you've got brackets go over the top of that, so they're gonna get squished down again. Okay, so this next part is for lack of a better word, a pain. Um, you're gonna try to get that spacer, you can kind of see it right, why well, can't you see it? Right there, that black kind of tube in the back, that needs to be over that hole, which has both plates, the, the transmission skid plate slides over the top of the engine skid plate. I've actually got everything held up by a jack right now. You see that, and there's no good way to do this other than to make sure these are loose in the center, those four countersunk bolts. Loosen everything up, pull this way down as much as you can and then fiddle with your fingers, get them nice and, uh, and shredded and uh, eventually you'll get it. So we've got those spacers and the bolts in connecting the engine skid plate to the transmission skid plate. And now what we gotta do is take these brackets and put them over the top of where all those wires are. And then you take these Allen head screws and bolts, or excuse me, Allen head bolts and nuts, and you run those up and you tighten them down. So this right here is why if you have a Revel, any Sprinter can benefit, but really uh, a Revel especially, if you have a Revel, getting the transmission transfer case skid plate in addition to the engine skid plate, look at how previously all of these cables hung really low on the vehicle and would have been the first thing to contact uh, any sort of uh, off-road rock, log, etc. Now they're all tucked up. You've got these side wings that push all these wires. They're still loose enough that you're not pinching them, but everything is held nice and tight and tidy. It's not gonna move or flex, and you've got a lot of protection here. Anyway, uh, I think it's really nicely done, and it's really gonna help out with all of your kind of low-hanging underbody stuff that you have on a Rebel. So now that I've got kind of all the bolts in, I've got one more bolt to put in here, but I'm going back and I'm tightening all this stuff up. I can't, for the life of me, I think I lost that bolt, so I gotta put another one in there. But right now I'm going through and tightening all the stuff that I left loose. Of course, dropping my wrenches, um, tightening all the stuff that I left loose earlier so that I could adjust the plate enough to get all of my bolts in, going back and making sure everything's nice and tight. We got one more part to put in, and this is that front skid plate, which is gonna kind of fill in this gap right here. You can see the Van Compass logo. Now, since we got everything powder coated blue, what I wanna do here, little rattle can. So now, when I put up this, that logo is gonna show through on the blue. So now I'm gonna grab one of these bolts that we used earlier, or that we saved earlier from the transmission item and I'm going to try to get it in. Sweet. <sighs> All right. 
Oh, it's good. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Look at this. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, I'm glad I rattle can that black. Cool. All right, I'm gonna throw in a couple more bolts in this plate and then we're done. Let's step back and admire. Here are the final images. We got everything in. I went back and put in some stainless black oxide hardware. Uh, the, the hardware that comes with it is actually kind of a chrome finish, but for our van, I want it to be black. So put some black oxide stainless in there. And overall, I think it came out really, really nice. It won't come in blue unless you do that yourself. It comes stock in black and aluminum, which I think also looks killer. And overall, uh, the van not only looks better, but is way, way more protected. Those cables uh, aren't hanging down and back anymore. And then way back there, you see the diff cover. Uh, that's another video we did as well. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching the uh, Van Compass skid plate install.